So the site we're in now is a natural longleaf pine stand that's been managed long term with prescribed fire. You can tell that by looking um, back behind me, you can see that the brush is not as tall as in some of the other sites we visited. Um, there is still woody stems in the understory, but again, it has had longer term prescribed fire, so that is much more under control. Um, this is actually a pretty good site for raking. It has not been raked in the past, but it is actually a pretty good site for raking because there is a lot of uh, pine straw on the ground. You can see this actually was a really good cone crop year for longleaf too. There's a lot of cones on the ground. So that's something when you think about raking, you need to not only have the woody stems under control, but you're going to need to be sure and get your cones, any cones and sticks and twigs kind of out of the way. Or when you rake them up, you do need to pull those out because that's something when we talk to um, those people who sell pine straw in the retail market, they don't want a lot of sticks and twigs, uh, a lot of insects, you know, stinging, uh, Anything that's going to sting, bite, hurt, people don't want those in their pine straw bales. So you need to be sure and have a, as clean of a bale as possible. Another thing to think about when you're thinking about the cleanliness of a bale is thinking about invasive species. This is something a lot of people really don't think about, but it can be a really big problem. Especially in the southeast, we have problems with things like kogan grass or Japanese climbing fern, and they are a lot of times prevalent in these longleaf pine systems or in our southern pine systems. So that's something you want to be sure that you have that completely under control before you ever undergo any sort of raking operations. Um, they can be controlled effectively with herbicides, but again, you really want to be sure that you have a professional to help you understand, make sure you don't have any invasive species in the understory, and that anything is completely controlled before you have any raking operations start. A lot of times people ask me, you know, how often should I rake? How often can I rake? And for how long? And I have to say that it really sort of depends on your objectives and depends on what type of forest type you're in. If you're in a pine plantation, that's something that is doesn't have a lot of native understory, that's really not one of your objectives, then machine raking can be appropriate and kind of raking more often and maybe for a longer time might be okay. Again, you need to think about your soils. Everything you do, you really need to think about soils because if you rake a lot and you have a very erodible soil, something that is very prone to erosion, then maybe you wanna not rake every year, but maybe like every other year, maybe rake for a couple of years and, and hold off for a year or two. Because what happens is when you rake, you're removing that understory, that litter layer that helps you know, kind of slow the flow of rainwater. That can encourage erosion if you take that away. Um, one of the things I've also seen with studies is showing that one of the big problems with pine straw raking is that loss of soil moisture and possible soil erosion. Actually, tree growth, tree height growth is really not impacted as much by pine straw raking, but that soil mo moisture component and that soil erosion component is. If you have a natural stand, more like this one, a lot of times people are starting to opt for what they call ecological raking, or this hand raking using a you know, hand rake like I have here, um, and not using machine equipment. They actually use a hand baler and a rake, they, and maybe tarps, they rake the pine straw up on the tarps, then are able to pull it to a more centralized location and bale from there. One of the benefits of ecological raking using a hand rake like this one, or maybe a pitchfork, is you it's a much lighter touch on the landscape. You're able to maybe use a pitchfork to lift the straw up and not damage your understory grasses and understory vegetation. Or using a hand rake, you can actually rake, for example, out here we have a lot of first year longleaf seeds, so you wouldn't want to tear those up. But actually I can rake over those with my rake and remove the pine straw, but not damage those seedlings. So that's something to really consider is what type of forest you have, kind of what your objectives are, what your understory looks like, and that's going to help you determine how you want to go about your raking process. Another thing people ask about a lot of times is wildlife and the impacts of pine straw raking on wildlife habitat. That is something that's really not very well studied and we really need more research in that area. When you think about kind of those ground dwelling birds, you think about quail, you think about turkey, 
you know, species that spend a lot of time on the ground. There is some concern, again, that you remove a lot of that knit cover, especially if you're in an intensive um, baling situation, maybe using a mechanical raking and baling, because you remove pretty much everything from the understory. So it does impact the cover and the opportunities um, for nesting that some of those birds might need. In a situation like this where you could easily hand rake, you can see there is still lots of cover. There's lots of um, vegetation on the ground, so it's not as big of an impact. If you have something like gopher tortoises on your forest, then mechanical raking would not be recommended because the impact of that equipment going over those burrows can damage the burrows. So it's definitely not something you'd want to consider. Usually pine straw falls in the fall of the year, usually October, November, December, depending on where you live, what region of the country you're in. Raking then follows into January, February, usually early January and into February is when raking usually occurs. The pine straw is fresh at that point, it's raked and baled and then sent to areas to be stored until most of the time when people want it is in the spring when people go out and they're trying to freshen up their landscaping around their homes or around businesses. So the optimum time for selling pine straw is usually March and April. So the pine straw falls in October, November, is raked usually January, February, and then sold in March and April. So that's kind of the time frame of pine straw production.